Gustav Mahler's Second Symphony was the composer's most popular work during his lifetime. It also signaled the start of a most important quest in the composer's life as he strove to adequately describe his vision of the afterlife and the soul's resurrection. Because of the technical, musical, and logistical demands of this piece, it's often referred to as a musical Mount Everest. I'm Peter Stafford Wilson, the music director of your Springfield Symphony Orchestra, and it's my pleasure to invite you to be a part of a very unique opportunity to hear this extraordinary piece live here in our own community as the Springfield Symphony Orchestra performs this monumental work. Unlike Mozart, who churned out his three masterpieces, the 39th, 40th, and 41st symphonies in the span of only two months, it took Mahler five years to complete this work. He envisioned the first movement as a standalone symphonic poem, yet ultimately decided to expand it into a full-length symphony. Another interesting aspect of this work is the fact that Mahler followed Beethoven's model of introducing a chorus for the final movement of the piece, thus expanding his palette available as the work reached its architectural climax. The text for the chorus role was taken from Frederick Gottlieb Klopstock's Die Auferstehung, The Resurrection, where the dictum calls out, rise again, yes, you shall rise again. Mahler used two verses of this piece and then created his own final verse. He also called for the largest string section possible, which then demands a huge chorus in order to balance the orchestral forces with the choral sound. And we're delighted to have singers from all over Springfield, not only our, our SSO Chorale, but the Wittenberg uh, Choral Forces and singers from all over our community as a part of this. Two solo parts are called for, both sopranos, and we're delighted to have Elise Deschamps, who dazzled audiences here as Carmen a couple seasons ago, and SSO cellist Jennifer Jill Araya fill those roles. Now, as the first movement is set off from the rest of the piece, followed by a long period of silence, Jennifer intends to play in the cello section for the first movement, then slip out to assume her duties as soloist for the end of the piece. And I think she's up for the artistic challenge. So don't miss this amazing opportunity to hear the sublime music of Gustav Mahler's Resurrection Symphony as we transform this barren stage here at the Kuss Auditorium to one of the largest communities of musicians we've ever assembled right here in April. <laughs>